happened uh, Saturday today because yesterday it didn't work. But I'm coming to you from D.C., so that's the great thing about this place, um, is that we can come every single time from different places around the world. And usually I do travel around the world, so we've done this in Thailand, we've done this in, um, let's see, in Brazil, in the U.K., in all kinds of countries. So. Um, we've done over 150. You can get a certificate of attendance if you go to the bit.ly address, the bit. Uh, and it is case sensitive ELT link. Um, you can also have access to any of our webinars absolutely free. So you can see all 100 topics. They're only 30 minutes. And today we're going to talk about brainstorming on mobile devices. Um, this is for Android and this is also for, um, this is as well for, um, iOS as well, Apple and iPad and all that good stuff. Um, the good thing is that when you're brainstorming, this is kind of one of those things that you can do for any topic, and it's something that um, I like to do. And there's somebody called me. <laughs> That's very interesting. Hi, me. <laughs> you can tell us where you're from. So far, we have people from um, from Hungary. We have people from. Brazil, um, Egypt, and Florida. So that's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. And Jerry, if you have anything on mind maps or graphic organizers, Jerry has a page for everything. So um, he's always sharing some really great stuff. <laughs> you can go to Pearl Trees and see even more free stuff, and I'll um, share that with you later. You can even have access to the slides after this. Um, but the Every, all of our students have ideas, and that's what teaching is about, is how to get them to encourage ideas, how to get them to have an idea of the topic that we're teaching, but not only that, it's also to get them to um, figure out what to do with their ideas, and that's a very, um, something that's difficult to do, so brainstorming is very important for that. I knew you would have a brainstorming mind mapping page. <laughs> Um, so I love this Charles Dickens quote, um, which is an idea like a ghost must be spoken to a little before it will explain itself. And that's the thing about ideas. When we think of ideas, it's it's not so. Everybody has ideas. Your students all have ideas, even the ones that you think are are maybe overactive and are not paying attention. They all have ideas. It's just how do we translate those ideas? How do they make it into becoming something? that is very substantial where they show you, hey, this is my idea for doing this, or this is the way that I connected it to the learning. Our language learners, they need help connecting with the content. And sometimes it's very difficult for them to visualize what that looks like. It's difficult for them to learn about the material and then to figure out what they're going to do with it. So one of the things that we have to do is get them to connect, and we can do that with brainstorming. So students, our language learners in particular, they need to be able to learn in ways to match their strengths, to make personal connections. They have to be able to organize their notes smartly, so it's not just enough that they take notes. They have to be able to categorize them, and they have to know where to find them. They need to know where to go back and do this easily. Um, they need to know how to visualize and contextualize it. So in other words, when they write a note or they take an idea or they they um, brainstorm or anything like that, they have to connect it to something very visual. So um, right now I'm going to take off Facebook because apparently it's making all these crazy things. <laughs> um, but they need to make it visual. They need to, to, to be able to take whatever they're learning and they need to be able to say, oh, this is how... I can visualize this. So, if, for example, if they're in Hungary or Argentina or um, in Egypt or you know in Brazil or something, then if they're learning about Washington D.C., then they have to picture that because they've never been to Washington D.C. more than likely. Or if they're learning about, for example, in San Antonio, we have um, that's where I'm from, that's where I live, and uh, my students they would have math word problems about trains. They've never been on a train because you don't ride trains in San Antonio. So that is something they have to be able to visualize and contextualize in order to be able to learn about it. They also have to have access to literacy tools. So while they're learning about a topic, whether it be math or science or whatever your topic is that you're teaching them, 
they have to have an easy access to something they can reference, like ongoing, because that way, if they need, if they struggle with anything, then you'll be able to have that reference for them, and you won't have to be there for them all the time. Because as a teacher, that's very hard to do to be able to have all the answers and to give them that kind of access all the time. So note-taking the past looked a lot like this. And so it was great. You could do a lot of things with Post-it notes. I love Post-it notes, so it's something I still use. But what are the problems? And you can type that in the chat box. What are the problems with this type of note-taking inside the book? Well, what's going to happen when you take the book, when you put it inside um, your bag or your backpack? Uh, what's going to happen when you close the book after you take those notes? So it's a good way to kind of memorize things. I know when I used to write things down like this, it's very good. Um, now you can have color coordinated ones, you have color ones and all these things. But one of the things um, is that it always helped me remember, you know, whatever I wrote down I could remember and it was easy for the test to be able to remember it and recall it as well. But the problem is these get lost, these post-it notes, they get lost. There's no kind of order. It's very messy. How do I know? Oh, I remember I took that note somewhere, but where did I place it? So all of this kind of has problems. It takes forever to go back and to, to, to organize this. It's just too time consuming. Um, but now with different things like mobile devices and also with um, iPads and all, even a regular cell phone, you can do so many cool things. And so in mobiles, you can draw, you can drag and drop, you can color code, you can tag things, you can categorize them and put them in online folders. You can even make it to where they're available offline. So after you take the notes, you have them available even without an internet connection. You can take pictures, you can have easy access to dictionaries where you can click on a word and a picture pops up. Um, or, you know, a dictionary pops up and it's better language, um, it's easier for the students to learn. They can even translate it in their own language, so that's really good. Um, they have where they can record audio with the annotation, so now your students can actually record parts of your lecture, and within that recording, they can include notes. They can actually go to 0.5 seconds and say, this is where she talked about animal. In 0.15 seconds, they can actually make a written note that says, this is where she talked about animals that lived in the North Pole. So um, that's what annotations means, where you can have a whole audio. And all of these are free, because I only like to share free resources, um, because there's so many great resources there. They can brainstorm as a class. So now everybody can take notes, and everybody makes a great note. Um, for the whole class, like Titanpad or something like that, or a Google Doc, but they all get together and they took the notes and now they have super great notes because they collaborated on this note taking. That's awesome. Um, they can access templates and forms, so they can actually, if you, um, some of the sites I'll show you, you can actually, they have it in form and templates. So, Students know how to do this smartly. They can put all their notes and they'll automatically put it in outline form. They'll say, this is the best form for this kind of note. What kind of notes are you taking? Is it a lecture? Is it from the book? Is it a video? You know, and then they'll say, this is the template for doing it, and they'll give you that. So it's very exciting, everything you can do on a mobile device, and you can carry with you everywhere. That's the great thing about it. Your students, while they're on the subway, want and I've worked many places around the world, like um, Germany and Greece and all kinds of situations, teaching refugees and uh, recently in Slovenia and Croatia. And so I've worked with students who don't have access to a lot. They only have their cell phone, and that's what they rely on. But the great thing is if they took audio notes, they can use, they can listen to that. And if they were, had written notes with the program, then they can reference that while they're on the bus. Um, while they're on the subway, while they're on the train, and they can listen to this ongoing um, offline. So it's really fantastic. They can upload images, documents, all kinds of things. So how do we get them to make sense? Um, and that's the problem, Maria. That's a good point. And I think this is, and Maria, is this Maria Bosa? Uh, if they aren't Nazis. And, oh, hi, Maria. Um, if you're not, you can, that's one of the things is to talk. And I have a free mobile learning book, um, and I'll give you access to that afterwards. 
Um, and you can download it as a PDF too, or, or works offline. But it gives you tips on how to talk to your director about allowing this. When I was in Croatia and Slovenia, um, the, what we did was we actually talked to the DOS or the directors in charge, and we asked them, would it be okay, or at the schools, the principals and said, would it be okay if we allowed them for a day, you can see what they're doing. And they allowed it for a day, and that was the first time they ever used their devices. And when we allowed it, um, then they got excited, and then they agreed to letting them do this once a month. So it's a step from there. You have to go through baby steps. You got to get them to see something exciting, you know, that you do with the mobile devices. Like make, we made commercials, and um, after you okay that one time, and you can show them, you make a, a, then they can allow it. I in Germany, what I started doing was, yeah, exactly, step by step. We did um, mobile Monday, so every Monday, that's when we got to use our mobile devices, and I had to get that okayed and show them the lessons and. You know, and then soon they were just so in love with it. They got everybody on Skype, and they had never even used Skype before. And then all of a sudden, everybody was coming to our institute to do Skype. Um, other schools would learn from ours. So uh, it's, they just have to see it in action, the possibilities. They have to see, like, what's the learning potential. And so that's how we started. Um, but one of the ways they can make, if you do have, and I know, I understand not everybody has iPads and things, so I'll show you things just you can do on a regular cell phone and mobile device too. Um, you only have classes on Mondays, so perfect. <laughs> uh, you can do it once a month. It doesn't have to be, you know, an, every third Monday of the month or something. And then your students look forward to Monday. They're like, wow, I love Mondays. You know, Friday's the new boring day. <laughs> um, but penultimate. Penultimate is my absolute favorite tool. Uh, I'm going to pause this for a sec because that way I can grab my iPad. Um, but the great thing is it's a free tool. I think they're going to get it. It's part of Evernote, so they should be getting it for um, Android too. But it's free. That's one good thing. Um, the other good thing, as well I'm getting it, um, is you can do so many cool tools with it. So with Penultimate, you can draw on it. That's what I love about Penultimate is that you can you can uh, draw with it. Oops. Here we go. Um, that you can actually draw with it. So um, you can here you can see all my notes. This is how ah. This is how I take notes when I'm at conferences. You take pictures, so I take pictures of the slides. So this is when I was at iTEFL. And then I can draw. I recently got a stylus pen. The stylus pen is just like a free little pen that you can uh, write on your iPad with. It looks a lot like this, you know. Um, it, it sort of looks like this. And then you can just draw with it. It makes it to where it's not this messy handwriting that I have here. And then it organizes it in notebooks. You can, um, on the notebooks, you can uh, you can copy things that you already wrote, and you can copy it to another notebook. Um, but it's pictures, all kinds of stuff. So that's why I love Pen Ultimate. That's a stylus. OK, I did put a picture here on stylus. Um, and it makes it easier to write. A lot of times, you can make them yourself. And they're very cheap or free. So I got mine for free. Um, a lot of companies will give them to you for free. Like if you go to training and stuff, you can ask for them sometimes. Um, and so that's what, how I got it. But you can, you, that's what I love about using mobile devices is that a lot of times typing is too slow for me. I'm used to the old ways. Like I, I need to be able to draw. So I'm going to show you what Pen Ultimate is. And they have all of these in the note taking app. So these are all the note takings I have. Um, I love it. I just take a picture and then I record it and then. I can draw, and your students can do this. They can even do it on Androids and a lot of their phones. They can just, they can get an app and they can do it. So this is where it is. Um, and this is actually a smart way to have students draw, um, to take notes. This is a new method that they have. You put it in a quadrant, so you draw in fours like that. You have them in any, even if they're doing paper notes, you can have them do that. Um, and then they can do, they can write their references, their quotes, and ideas. So that's how they're taking their things. So that's the way, the smart way to do notes um, is what a lot of researchers and stuff say. 
um, this is one called Inkflow. Inkflow does the same thing. You can write. You can. Uh, it has thinking maps. This is what you can do. You have graph paper. I mean, it's just awesome. All the things that you can do. You can rename it. You can duplicate it. You can record audio. You can put videos. If you take a video for the instructor. Um, there's one called Idea Sketch. Idea Sketch is for all devices. It's even in your cell phone and Android. Um, this one you have to type it out, but it's just like a mind map. It's a thinking map. And I use a lot of these thinking maps before every lesson. So before every lesson we do something like we might do, for example, the great thing about penultimate is if I go to, okay, so I'm going to do another one. I'm going to go home and then I'm going to add a new one. Okay, so I just duplicated it. Well, I duplicated it, but um, we're going to erase that. Ah! Okay, so where am I? Anyway, so here's the graphing paper. And what I, I can do is I can say, let's do a KWL chart. So while I'm driving, I can pick the color. So I, I, I pick the color blue. And then I do the line. So I just, with my finger, I can do a line. And then that's how the students do it. Then they can do no. You, have you seen the KWL chart? Are you familiar with that graphic organizer? Does anybody know KWL? <laughs> yes, okay. What is KWL? So then they fill out the first form. The first one, they can add pictures. So if I want to take a picture, I can add the picture. And then, so you can have them fill it out on the graph. So you use the things that you've already done. What do they know? Maybe they want to take pictures of it. Maybe they want to add a video clip, or maybe they want to add an audio instead of just what they normally do. So you can do that. MindMeister is for all devices as well. It's a mind map. You can add little icons and clips as well. You can send it for PDF. You can email it to the teacher. So after they do that, um, then they can do that. Um, they can go ahead and they can, um, they can, they can email it to you of how they brainstorm for a topic. So let's say before that they're they're getting into um, each other. Oh, <laughs> so Jerry has one. A thank you, a KW tab. And so they do this as pre, um, before they actually do the assignment. And that's what I like them to do. So sometimes they'll get in groups and they'll, they'll use a brainstorming tool like this. Um, sometimes they use something like EduCreation. And they get together and I say, okay, so recently in Croatia, for example, they had to do, they had to invent an app. And I said, okay, so I worked with kids and teenagers, but the teenagers, I said, okay, so here is the deal. We have the XYZ company, and the XYZ company wants to make the new app. There is not an app for that <laughs> the, uh, for teenagers. So they want to solve something for teens. What is it that teens face? What do you face? You are going to work in a group of three or four, and you have to brainstorm what it is that teenagers face one, and an app, how an app could fix that. So that's what they did. And so they had the brainstorming process. So it looks something a little like, I'm going to actually erase all that. OK, so now we're going to do, hmm. OK, so then they had to do something where, ah, where is it going? OK, so then they had to brainstorm, and they wrote on their um, devices or on their papers, and then we took pictures, and then we put it on Evernote. But one of the things that they did was they wrote, like, all the stuff that problems teenagers face, which in Europe is very different. So some of them would put things like smoking. They made a smoking app, <laughs> but it was more like how to um, get cigarettes that didn't cause cancer or something like that. And the other one was drinking. They said, oh, you know, we want to drink in class and things like that, and we get very thirsty. So they did this great app on how to get something to drink really fast. It was really nice. One did it on currency exchange. So if they ever travel, um, in, you know, uh, they were in the border, and Croatia just recently got into 
um, the EU, so now they don't have a different currency, but at the time they did, so they needed something. They were right in the border of the European Union, so they needed something to change into euros. Um, so that was one of the things they did, um, was make an app for that. It was really cool. And then so after they did all these apps, then they had to brainstorm the video because they had to make a 30-second commercial. They did this all in 45 seconds. They even presented their video. So the brainstorming process was key to this. This is what got them to really stay on task. This is what got them. If I would have just said, okay, you're making a video about an app you invented, it would have been messy and sloppy. But by brainstorming, we were really able to get them to uh, organize their thoughts, work in groups, and able to designate tasks. Okay, so now that we know this is how we're making our video, what props we're going to make and everything like that, then we can say who's responsible for what. The next thing, um, there's another, there's other apps like this. This is the one called Lecture. It's Supernote. The great thing about Supernote is you record whatever the teacher says, and that's where you can make notes. So it keeps recording. And then you can pause it at one section, like 10 seconds in, and you can type in a note. You can type in something that says, okay, this is where the teacher talks about the theory of revolution or something like that, a relativity. Or this is where the teacher talks about antonyms or um, I really like this part. And so you can do that. You can put a timer, um, all kinds of things. So there's so many things you can do with note-taking apps. So if you do have the ability to have apps, then these are things you can do. If you don't have the ability to have apps, there's Evernote. Evernote is free. It has all these great things, um, Sketch and Penultimate and all these things. It's on every device, and it's on your computer. So if you don't have mobile devices to work with, then it's on your computer, too. It's absolutely free. The great thing is you can take a picture of your notes, and then all of the text within that picture becomes searchable on Evernote. So you can just take a regular picture of your notes, even if you did on pen and paper, and Evernote will put them and let the students organize them. So it works on all devices, and it's free. Um, so there's different things you can do. You can organize, research, or study the origins of a word, law, or concept. You can even do family maps. My maps is one of um, Poplet is a great tool for that. It's free. You can do it online. It's collaborative. You can have five that are collaborative. Um, Hopla, it's great. You can embed it on your own wiki. So if you teach on a wiki page or if you teach with a Wix site or any kind of like site that you have for your teaching, then you can embed the Poplet. Um, you can search. This is what sometimes I do at the word walls. You can search with um, Flickr. You can draw with it. There's so many great things that you can do. Hi, everyone. Hi, Angela. <laughs> and Sonia just joined us, too. Um, you, so this is what it looks like. You can have collaborative ones where more than one person can work on it. You can search for YouTube videos. You can take your own pictures and draw. Another thing that's online and also works with I, iPad, Kindle, Android, all of these, Kindle Fire, is, um, is Quicklist. Quicklist was invented by a student. I got to interview him. He's fantastic. Now he's like 19, but he made this app called Quicklist, and it works online. You can start it off for free. It has a built-in dictionary. Um, it gives you templates on how to structure your notes, and it was made for note-taking. It was made by a student who was in college who said, or in high school, and he said, I need to learn how to take better notes. And it would be better if we had an app or something free for students to have that would make it so much easier so they could take down notes, so they can be able to search like it has. Uh, what it'll do is it'll highlight words, and it'll give you the Wikipedia article link automatically to that word or concept. Um, it backs up your notes daily so you don't lose them. It lets you tag them and categorize them. It lets you search your notes. So that's one of the things that's really cool because if you do it online, if you do it on the computer, if you have your students, even if they take a picture of it so they can put it online their notes, that's better because they can categorize it and they can search it. That's so important. Um, your notes become more effective and usable when you can search the notes. So even as a teacher yourself, when you're going to professional development, when you're doing these webinars, um, imagine that we all took notes. 
together, we could do this through tie and pad, or imagine we could just have this all in line, every note to all these 150 webinars that we've done for American CECL, then you would have all of these searchable. You could go back and search them. Let's say you were going to do a lesson uh, 10 days from now, and you're doing a lesson on animals, and you're trying to find this particular animal project. You could have searched all 150 notes on, for animals, animals in the UK or animals in China, and then you could find it. So that's the point we want to get for our students where they can do that when they have a topic or research or something. Even if they did it four years ago, uh, whatever notes they took four years ago, they can search all of them, all the notes they ever have throughout their school lifetime. And they can say, hey, I learned a really cool tool then, or I learned a really cool website, or I can get an idea. That's what we want them to do. So collaborative brainstorming options. We work better when we take notes together. Google Drive is great for that. You can have them color code the notes. You can have this available for offline. Um, hi, yes, this is Shelly. <laughs> um, you can have a group chat. So you can actually, on the side, you can chat together while you're taking your notes. You can leave comments. And when you leave comments, these, what that means is you actually go here. Um, over here somewhere, insert, and you leave a comment. When you leave a comment, what that means is that you can actually go and you can say, look, I have a problem with this area. This is where you didn't spell something wrong or I'm not really clear on your notes here. And then the student gets that in their email and they have to resolve that. So yes, we can see you, uh, <laughs> we can see your writing online. So that's what I think is really awesome about that. You can reverse changes. So let's say you say, oh, well, if I have collaborative notes, then how is my student going to be able to, what if one of them erases it? That's OK, because you have a Google tracks every single note taking. So you can go back to, to 10, you know, 10 days before something, and somebody erased everything, and you can restore it, because it saves all of that for you. Um, and so there's various privacy options. You can make it to where only your uh, students will go. And um, oh, yeah, so as I was saying that they used an international project with six countries. Yes, it works very well. See, so this is the chat box. I have anonymous user and me, and we're chatting. So this is what I upload all of my student projects. This is the one for Slovenia. Um, first, they had to say their group name, their group color, their group theme song, and they have to fill it out through a Google Doc. So we use Google Docs a lot uh, when I was planning projects in Slovenia and stuff like that. It just is wonderful. They can do so much with it. Um, so you can also have other sticky note sites that are good for brainstorming. You have something like Linuit or even Padlet. I have this. Um, the great thing about it is your students don't have to register for this. You register, you create this wall, and then they add a sticky note. It replaces those post-it notes, but it's online. So when you go to Linuit, it's available on all devices. You can use this on iOS. You can use this. I can do this on my cell phone. So I can open the Linuit. It's a free app. Or I can just open the Linuit, and I just go like this, and I can create my sticky note for it. The great thing is I use this sometimes for class websites. So when I was in Slovenia and Croatia, this became very helpful. And this is where they uploaded their projects. So you can see they did their stories. They had to add all these pictures. They got pictures together. They put them together. And see, you see how a lot of times when we have not that much technology, I have them take pictures of their writing. So a lot of times, this is how we integrate the technology. And then they can upload anything there. They can upload files, pictures, all of the stuff. They wrote a story about their pictures. And they added it all to the Linuit wall. Padlet. Padlet's amazing because it has templates. So the background here is countries. And each person went and they added their country, their travel bucket list. They, these are templates within Padlet. Padlet's beautiful. It has drag and drop. It's awesome. The only reason why that I didn't do Padlet, uh, I recommend it. It is free, and it's on all devices. It works on Android. It works on your computer. It works on um, iOS, so an iPod and things like that. It works on Windows 8. It works on Kindle, everything. The thing is that sometimes Padlet is wonky. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's not very stable. Sometimes it can get overloaded. So that a lot of reasons why I don't do Padlet all the time, even though it's most visually pleasing. It's so beautiful. I love Padlet. 
Um, I can upload videos, images, links, YouTube videos, everything. I can use it as a back channel. I can make it use where it's a bunch of pictures like this or something like this where it looks like a mind map um, to it looks like a blog post. I can do all of that uh, to where it's something like this. There's so many options. The problem with Padlet is it sometimes doesn't work all the time. So this is a Padlet. I had them do messages in the sand. Um, I took a picture of messages and then I asked them, I said, okay, so I always write messages in the sand. These are pictures of all the places that I've traveled to, but I take messages and I leave them. And the reason why I do that is it's my thing. Like, um, I'm a writer and so I like to leave like a real short message like I will inspire or believe or um, live the life you love. You know, I write this in the sand. Because I imagine that the person coming next to me, I've done this in Israel, I've done this in Brazil, all sorts of places. But the great, the thing for me is it's a way of thinking of what did that person who comes across it next, what is it going to inspire them to do? You know, maybe they'll just kick it away and say, oh, I hate that message. Or maybe, you know, they'll be inspired to go visit a family friend or do something in their life. And then I think of that story and I write that story. It makes me feel creative. So I do that with the students as well, you know, in other places I say, okay, include your sticky note. What are you going to write in the sand? And it's actually a sand template. It's a sand background, so it's, it's the best thing I could find to writing in the sand. And then some people put soon, some people put dig in the sand, synergize. So um, there's ways that you can get them to start building ideas that way using Padlet. Um, a student can also brainstorm for a project. Tweedla.com is one of the things I use as well. I love Tweedla. The great thing about Tweedla is you don't have to register, and that's the thing. For me, it's very important to have these tools that students do not have to sign into. And um, no, I just, okay, so Maria asked a very good question. She said, when you use all these apps, do you teach them first or do you just mention them? I don't even teach them. I give them a task. So it's something, that's how easy Padlet, Tweedla, and Linoit are that I don't have to teach them. All I tell them is, okay, this is your task. Write a message in the sand. And then what I have them do is I have them just go and I say, just click on it. Just, just click on it and write it. And then they do it. So that's how, um, that's what's awesome about it. So Sonia asked, you can have up to 100, Sonia. But the, the problem with this is that once they're on there, you don't want to have 100 because they'll erase things, they'll erase each other's stuff. I've noticed that become the problem, not so much with Padlet and, uh, and Linuit, but with uh, Tweedla, yes. Tweedla, I think you should have four or five. You can add shapes, you can add text, you can add an HTML page. So you can actually upload a website thing to Tweedla. You don't register. You can put your guest name, or I always have them put their last name and their first initial or their initial so I know which student did it. Um, the other thing is, is, is you can talk through voice with Tweedla. That's why I love Tweedla. You don't have to register, but a lot of times you can just go and you can, um, the great thing about it is you, you can have voice conference. And that's why I like this a little bit better than Google Docs because, yes, we can use Google Docs for all this stuff as well. But you don't have the voice. And with students, they need the voice sometimes. They need to be able to talk to each other as well as chat. So they can chat and they can talk on voice. Um, if they don't, yeah, that's what I do. I, but you can only do it with certain things. You can only do that with Tweedla. You can only do that with Poplet. And I think you can only do that with Linuit because they're not very hard to get. Um, and what I do give them basic steps. I say basically, okay, you have to click on the sticky note to put it on the wall. That's about it. And then just type. <laughs> and then they test it for themselves. When they come up with problems, then, you know, I help them with those problems. But it's that easy to use that, you know, I've managed to do this in many, many classes around the world with BYOT, which is, you know, whatever technology you have. And then it ends up being that they can do it. <laughs> Um, Together Learn is a great free iPad app, so if you do have an iPad, and usually I have one iPad in class, which is this iPad, which is the only one I bring, which is what I brought. So if you do have one and you teach with it, then this is a good tool. Um, you have video conference, so up to seven can be on a video. 
they can watch a video, they can watch a TED Talk, they can see an uh, online site, or they can see a picture. Once you download the app, it works, you know, even without. You can highlight, you can draw, and you can write things, you can take notes together. So it's very cool about that. Flowchart, and you're going to love me for this. If you go to lyricalflowchart.com, you're going to see this awesome video. It takes all flowchart. Lucid Chart is awesome. You can use it on any device. You can use it online. You can make collaborative um, mind maps and stuff. But they have this new cool thing called Lyrical Flow Chart. So they take the lyrics of a famous song. They put them on YouTube. So you can watch it. Just type in Hey Jude Lucid Chart. And you're going to see. You're going to be amazed. It takes the grammar structures and highlights them in different colors while the song is going through. So your students can see the grammar structure highlighted of all of these songs. It's so amazing, a famous song. So you can hear, so if you're teaching a lesson on um, lyrics, then you can ask Lucid Chart. The guy is very nice. He's so sweet. He's written on my blog before. He's one of the few companies I actually allow to write on my blog because it's free, and he does so many amazing things. But this lyrical flow chart is absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, and I actually didn't learn it from him. He usually tells me a lot of things. He got a free iPad app too, even though you can use Lucid Chart anywhere. Um, but one of the things, it has drag and drops, which I love drag and drop because it means you click on something and you just drag it and place it there. So it's so easy to do. Your students love it. Um, you can add all these shapes. You can do collaboration as well. You can invite collaborators. Okay, so your whole entire class can do one together. Um, but I learned about it from Ana Maria Menendez. Uh, Educreations, Educreations is awesome too. You can record a nine-minute video. It's on your iPad as well. You record it. It's edible. Um, you can draw. You can type. You can do all of these things. You even get your own free class, which is on the web. So it is on your computer, your desktop, and you can have it for different classes. You can, whenever your students send a video, it automatically gets uploaded to your classroom. So that's very cool because it makes it easy to grade. It makes it easy to assess. You can have one for each class. Show Me app does the same thing. Um, I don't like it as much. Screenshot, same thing. I don't like it as much, but they do wonderful things. So when you're using any of these tools, you can use worksheets that you've already used. You can use graphic organizer and notes. So we thought, no wonder learned the KWL chart that Jerry posted a thing about earlier. You can still use all of these. So if you do have to use mobile devices or technology, all you do is upload the picture to any of these sites, and the students can draw on it. So you can still use your old you know, worksheets and handouts and graphic organizers, you just have your students upload the picture and then they can draw on it. They can draw and they can write and they can have pictures and links and all kinds of cool stuff now. So of course I would put all my bookmarks in a um, mind map as well because I love mind maps. I love brainstorming tools. I love graphic organizers. I love concept maps. All of this stuff I love because it works well for students. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the link to all of these. So if you think, oh, sh you know, I didn't catch any of that, you can go here and you can find all of these links yourself. Um, and then you can see which ones work for you. So there's a lot of things that I presented and hopefully you have some ideas. But the, the thing isn't to get everything. The idea is take one or two ideas in the presentation and use them in your setting. What's going to work for you? And not everything's going to work for you. So um, thank you so much for um, coming today. Here's me and who's the rascal who can make it today, but he's very smart. He, he, he likes mind mapping and graphic organizing too, even if it's for his treats. <laughs> oh, he's fine. He just visits the vet on a regular basis. He just can't go to Washington, D.C. with me because I don't like for him to fly so much. Um, it's not very good for pets to fly, but thank you so much again. Um, before I go, Jake's going to say hi, because Jake's here, Duncan Bilingual on um, Twitter. He's my, my date for the BAMI, so hopefully I'll... Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> We're going to go to the, the BAMIs very soon. <laughs> so thank you all so much. Well, thank you, Sonia. I hope you all learned something.